This box right here that I've built over the past week is the brains of the organ console that is ultimately going to be controlling all of the pipes that are in Joan's organ. This box is wired up to the organ stop switches, these things right here, that have been in the organ console all along. The way that these switches were originally wired into the organ won't work now because we've made all of the other organ pipes respond to MIDI. So that's why we needed to make the big silver console brain. But first, before we have a look at this box, let's have a closer look at the switches themselves. So these rows of switches are the organ stops and uh, yeah, they are pretty interesting in their function. They come in all shapes and sizes but this one comes out of the console right here. This is the switch connection that turns on and off so you can flick it on and off and this one right here is the open diapason. So this will turn on the uh, eight foot open diapasons on the switches for I think this is the swell setup. But they're pretty funky because they can be controlled remotely. We've looked at a slightly different design of these before when we were making a display display for the display display in the museum and you'll see here that they, it's actually got two coils. And if you put some electricity through here we can actually turn on and off the switch without even touching the switch. So we'll put one connection onto the common bus bar which goes to ground and then we flick these right here and you'll notice we're able to turn it on and off. That means we can use the preset board to make presets for the buttons that are just below the keys. That means you can change the settings on the organ without even having to touch the switches. It's pretty funky isn't it? So the issue with these that we have is it would be good that we could take them in and take them out without having to remove any of the switches. So I'm going to add some connectors to the back of them, but they need to be quite low profile so they still fit in and out. So I've 3D printed these uh, little funky things that are going to connect to D sub connectors these bad boys right here. So you'll be able to plug them in and unplug them where if you need to pull these out for whatever reason. I designed these yesterday on Onshape which is an online CAD program. There's a link below if you want to check it out. It's really interesting because you don't need to download any software and it works just like a normal CAD thing. You would expect that if it's on the internet it will be a bit clunky but it really is not at all and I was able to whack these out and there's a link below to Onshape if you're interested. Anyway you pop them on here. I'm gonna have to file the sides of these little bit just to make it fit and we're going to be able to connect all the connections to this so we can connect it to other things. So we're now at the point where the console brain is bolted together. It's not as neat as I'd like it to be because I did make a fundamental error when putting this together. I forgot that the common power rail on these switches is actually positive voltage instead of ground. It meant that I had to rewire a bunch of things and add some uh, resistors afterwards. So it does look a little bit scrappy but it will do. Anyway I'm aware that I haven't even talked about what the fudge is going on here so let's have a closer look. So it's actually pretty oversized for what it is. I like building bigger rather than smaller because it's much easier to fix, it's easier to see what's going on. It doesn't need to be small, so what's the point? Let's make it nice and big and fancy. So each of these switch sets are connected via these D sub connectors right here. I've seen people ask why have I done it like this? Well it's because it's the simplest way in my opinion and after I've explained what's going on here it'll probably make a lot more sense. So up top here we've got four MIDI inputs. One for the pedals on the console, one for the bottom keyboard, the great keyboard, and one for the swell keyboard that is on the top. And we've also got another input for external inputs for uh, playing other things via MIDI into the console brain. These then travel over these wires to this thing which is a Kenton MIDI merger. What this does is it merges all of the unsynced MIDI commands from all of the separate MIDI inputs. In hindsight I could have wired up the console slightly different to get them all coming in on one wire. But what are you going to do? This works well. 
After this has merged all the messages together from the two keyboards, the pedals and anything else that's coming in information from a computer or something, this then goes and talks over to this circuit board right here. What this circuit board does is basically allocate the information that's coming in from the keyboards to whichever pipes it needs to go to. So the MIDI data I'm talking about comes through a MIDI cable that looks like this. These are the things that plug in from the keyboards. And at any one time with a single MIDI cable, you can actually control 16 separate things. That means with a single MIDI cable, you can control 10 synthesizers and six drum machines all at once. All you have to do is tell them to listen to different MIDI channels, one to 16. And I've used the fact that you can control different things on different MIDI channels to make the organ work as it does. Please excuse the absolute beauty of my drawing. How this works is there's a wire coming from the pedals right here, there's a wire coming from the lower keyboard which is the great keyboard, and there's a wire coming from the top keyboard which is the swell keyboard. The pedals are allocated to send signals out on MIDI channel 1. The great keyboard is allocated to send out MIDI channels to MIDI channel 2, and the swell keyboard is allocated to send MIDI notes on MIDI channel 3. These all then go over and talk to the console brain, and the stop switches are also wired into the console brain. But then remember, the console brain is also wired into the organ pipes. In total, this organ, even though it has multiple wind chests, it only actually has four ranks of pipes. We've got the principal pipes, these are the metal ones. We've got the wooden pipes, which include the smaller ones and the bigger ones. We've got the string pipes, which look like these pipes, so they've got holes in the top. And we've also got the reed pipes, which sound like the party blowers. These are like the weird trumpety things that look like that. And these ones are allocated to listen to their own MIDI channels as well. So this one listens to MIDI channel 13. This one listens to MIDI channel 14, this one listens to MIDI channel 15, and this one listens to MIDI channel 16. These first switches are for the swell keyboard, these ones are for the grate, and these are for the pedal. When all of these stop switches are off and you play on the keyboard or the pedal, nothing is gonna travel to the pipes. But let's say we flick one of these stop switches down on the grate, when we play on the grate keyboard, it'll play the pipes that are allocated to that switch. So if we flick this, which is actually the eight foot diapason, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this, which will send MIDI channel two out, and the brain will tell MIDI channel 13 to play those pipes. When we flick all of these stop switches out and we play the grate, the brain is gonna tell all of it in all of its configurations to just play what it needs to play. That was a lot of gobbledygook, but I hope it made sense. The brain, of course, needed some custom code to allocate the different switches to do what they were supposed to do. And I wasn't really sure because a plonker like me, I didn't really know what any of these switches really meant. We got Nazar two and two thirds. So I put a vlog up on Patreon a few days ago and some people were very forthright with their information. I'm pretty sure I figured out what a lot of these mean. The thing is, is this is a combination organ. That means a lot of these things are kind of pretending to be other pipes when they're not really. So for instance, this set of stop switches, which is for the great keyboard, uh, the open diapason switch, which is eight foot, kind of you flick that and then you play the keyboard and it plays the metal pipes that I mentioned. Lieblich, Lieblich, Lieblich. By the way, these might need adjustments, but Lieblich, I coded to be able to play just the wooden pipes as usual. The Salitional, uh, these uh, play the uh, string pipes, I think. Gemshorn, Gemshorn was a tough one, but what I set up to be is basically playing both of the wooden and the metal pipes, but plus 12 notes, so it plays an octave higher on top of these ones. The Salis set plays an octave higher on the string pipes, which is over here. Nazard actually plays a note that's a fifth above these two pipes as well, so when you flick that down, it actually plays a note that is 19 notes above this one. The horn I've wired up to play the reed pipes, and the clarion I've wired up to play an octave above the reed pipes. So regarding the code, uh, I'm currently putting it together now. I've been reading this, MIDI and Arduino, an introduction. Tom Scarf, you can buy this on the online and it comes with a bunch of different example codes and such put together. Here's the IBSN number. Definitely recommend uh, checking out his site. The link is below. So right now I've just, all I've got is uh, the swell channel set up. So that's the channel keyboard coming in on MIDI channel three. And this, uh, as you can see, there's some flashes. Every time I hit the key, there's some flashes. And right now it's just got it going into a MIDI monitor. So MIDI channel three, I've just got it going and it's only changing it to MIDI channel 13. Now we need to start getting it talking to the switches. Now adding a simple digital read command, we can actually make it turn on and off. So you can see there's no digital information coming in. We flick this on and there's information. Test number one, 
and flick them all on. Oh yeah! So that code is inside this Arduino. The MIDI goes in through here and into here, and then this also talks to these wires that are coming from all of the stop switches right here. But that isn't everything that is connected to these D sub connectors. There are also wires that talk to the electromagnetic coils that we looked at earlier that remotely turn on and off the stops. And that's where this circuit board comes in. The MIDI data also comes down into this. You'll recognize this circuit board because it is exactly the same as all of the other circuit boards that are on all of the organ wind chests that control the electromagnetic coils that turn on and off the organ pipes. But this one is wired up to the stop switches to turn them on and off remotely. In the next video, this is also going to be wired into the preset board, but that is a whole other matter that we'll touch on in the next video. But what this does is it gives us the ability to turn on and off different presets on the organ console using MIDI files. So when we're playing it automatically or remotely, we can change the dynamics. I've got a little bit more work to do to get the keyboards to play to this, primarily just changing the MIDI channels on these because they're all on MIDI channel 1, but we can try it, like so, let's try open diapason. Bit out of tune now, but we're getting there. Solution all as well. to make this work really well. The main issue is MIDI sends out a note on command and when you stop playing it, it sends out a note off command. So it's not actually sending out notes to keep the notes on. The keyboard is basically telling it when to turn on and when to turn off. Right now, because I've only bashed this code together yesterday, if I press play on the keys, they get stuck to do that and also when we're playing them and we push down the stops they don't do anything so there's a bit more of work to do on the code and there's another problem about the code that we'll be talking about in a little bit but let's uh let's just test it a little bit more <laughs>
well, we're not out of the woods yet. We still need to voice a few of the pipes. I've got to finish this. That'll be by the end of this video. We've also got to get another flexi pipe going into the air system from the bellows. People have said about doing solid ones, but I want to stick with flexi so I can move it around. So it's quite late now, I was feeling pretty good, I had this going. And yeah, all of a sudden a note decided to stick open. I've tried a load of things to try and unstick it and it just ain't budging, I don't know why. Unfortunately, what I'm gonna have to do is, I think this is gonna have to be an all out job. I'm gonna have to pull the whole friggin' thing out. It's not an important note for the demonstration, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bung it up with some toilet. Oh, oh! Have you ever heard something that sounds so good? That is the sound of heaven. There's a slight noise, but it'll be enough to show you what's going on. Right. So after fiddling on the code for a little bit, I've made it a little bit better, and yeah, it's pretty much all working as it should do. <laughs> if I could actually play it. So <laughs> Let's whack it all on, I got all the stops. I'm gonna turn off the pedals right now, I've got massive boots on and I have no idea what, what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna focus on the keyboards right now. So if you turn on the open diapason stop on the grate and you do it on the open diapason on the swell as well. Now this is the issue that I haven't sorted out in the code yet. The problem is with what I said about MIDI, it sends MIDI note on and MIDI note off commands. That means when I push it down on here, this MIDI note is exactly the same as this one right here. The problem is, is if I play this one here, my finger's down on this key, I play this one, and I take my finger off this top key, it stops and my finger's still playing this. So now we need to add something like a counter or something to the code. So it counts the midi ons, one, two, and then it has to wait for both of them to turn off before you send a midi off. Because this is a combination organ, a lot of the pipes are shared between all of the settings, which means in certain instances that this problem could be quite a big problem. But the cool thing is with separate stop switches for each of the keyboards, you could play different sounds on each keyboard. So you've got like the simple, Nice quiet thing, we'll go with a solution. Now we go for a uh, stop diapason on the top. kind of play the lower dynamic kind of range of this uh, instrument. Hey. Not being somebody who usually appreciates dynamics, it's either on or off for me. I really quite like the string pipes in this because they're quite delicate and breathy. I really like them, I sound like, I sound pretty. <laughs> switch over here called swell to great. What that means is that whatever's going on up here, which is the uh, wooden pipes, whatever they're called, you flick them and this keyboard now combines with the bottom keyboard. So instead of going, you could go. That means if you flick all of the keys at the same time and you flick the swell to great, everything is on the bottom keyboard. In the 
next video, we're gonna sort out these preset switch piston thingamajiggies that plug into the preset board that I showed you earlier. We might be putting the console on a platform so that can move around freely. And we'll also be sorting out a load of other problems. But before the preset pistons, let's bash together a MIDI file that makes the most of adjusting the stops remotely.